Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Georgia Zapparoli. I'm the winner of the Manx Lit Fest Poetry Slam, both this year and last year. I'm a performance poet, that's what I do. Um, I go on stage and talk an awful lot of nonsense, sometimes in rhyme, sometimes not. And some, hopefully, it entertains people. Um, today, I'm going to do three poems for you. The first one I'm going to start with is the winning poem from this year's Manx Lit Poetry Fest. Sorry, <laughs> Manx Lit Poetry Slam. Um, it's called Choices. Choices. We all have to make them. Which drink to drink, which thought to think, is this rock bottom or Nirvana's brink? Here's a hint. It's in your hands. And yet our plans never seem to pan out because we're scheduling our schemes without talking. We're riffing without harmony and walking when we should be dancing and asking, what do you want to do? And look, I know you get frustrated when you're waiting and I'm saying, I don't know. It's just so hard to decide. But we're drowning in a sea of unnecessarily delineated similarities, dubious differences, invisible to the naked eye, distracting as wide as a sigh with the full spectrum of importance from turquoise to teal until you don't know how you should feel because they're stealing your freedom. Do you want gold or silver bars on your cage? Choices. We all have to make them. Which turn to turn, which bridge to burn, which path to choose, whose respect to earn. Here's a hint. It's your own. Because when you're thrown from your throne that you built with blood and bone, you're going to have to knot your rope and start climbing. Hand over blistering hand while the shifting sands of others' expectations and your own anchor preoccupations will determine at which strata you plateau. And although the decisions that you make may be different from his, or hers, or mine, you've got to remember that they're yours, but they do not define you. They're just choices. We all have to make them. Which battle to battle, which river to rattle, which knowledge to keep. Are we mind or matter? Here's a hint. Reprioritize. Because when you try to see past the inconsequential shysters that come with living in this world, more commercial than pure, be assured, you will see the ones who choose long-term betrayal over temporary tears, and you will see the ones who choose substance abuse over substance, and you will say, well, they made the wrong decision, out of spite, as if it's your undeniable right to judge and begrudge instead of empathize, instead of realizing that the preferences of others are not your responsibility, and that your own susceptibility to deference to a power you perceive to be greater than your own is deceiving. It's just another way to opt out of believing in yourself and in your own ability to choose. Now, after LitFest, um, I wrote an awful lot of poems for the people that I met at LitFest. That's what I do. I tend to write um, about things that I read in the news or I write things to people that I know. Um, one of the things that I wrote recently was for Jennifer Lawrence. I'm sure you've all heard about or been aware of the pictures leaking thing and then all of the Gamergate and all of that. Um, so I wrote this for her. Um, I hope you enjoy it. It's called Garnering Respect. Iconoclasts have come at last to save us from this drudgery, this too easy, this clear to see hegemony. But icons as they are say what they want and not the truths we seek. Brutally bleak, more earnest than just freakishly banal. Their hype and zeitgeist distort the swarm, redefining the form of normality, crudely mismarketing misogyny and misandry as pride. Another cardboard enemy, and just a Goldstein drawn among us to deride. A different one allows themselves to be unformed, unsure, walks clumsily. This ungarnished personality is kept as sideline eccentric to reject at will. And they will, using nebulous concepts such as standards or breeding or culture. 
as excuses to slaughter to the screeching of the vultures on whatever altar serves best the purpose being pushed. And the person being crushed by such faltering disservice does not stop being a person when you're hungry for their blush. Objects made of people will ultimately fail. Neither use nor ornament is the old wives sliding scale. Old wives, old knives, old scores to be settled. Metal measures metal, but the meter always morphs. Intangible outfluences, diluting stimulations, reactionary conflation of the story you would tell, intrinsic expectation of how disgracefully you fell from the pedestal they put you on, the one you didn't build. It grew beneath your feet in the instant you stood still. Starlet in the spotlight, frozen, blind, wide-eyed. Now they demand your penance for having a private life. Sordid little details, now publicly discussed, using terms like unladylike and ashamed and disgust. Hold your head up high, dear. Fear is something they've not earned. Their cruel attempts to dampen your flame that brightly burns is just a pissing contest. You're treading on their toes. The days of rule by bully force are coming to a close. I'm going to pour myself some water. I get terrible dry mouth when I'm on stage. Do excuse me. Um, one of the things that I love about social media is that I used to be terrified of poetry, uh, performing specifically, and um, I went to see Amanda Palmer at the Roundhouse in London last two years ago, July, um, and she inspired me to write a poem, which I then tweeted to my sister. My sister then tweeted it to Amanda Palmer, who then shared it with the entire world, uh, which was terrifying uh, and like being naked in front of everybody. Um, but it gave me the confidence to actually go and take part in Litfest, which is an incredible thing for, for an island so small to have such a wonderful literary festival, to bring such wonderful people over. Um, and it really brought home to me how good this island is. Despite the fact of its size, it's so impressive, the things that we can do over here. Um, I also spend an awful lot of my time arguing with people about um, British policies rather than Manx policies. And um, <laughs> one of the things, because I work in pharmacy, and it's an awful cliche for healthcare workers to support left-wing policies, and I'm sorry to bring politics into it, but uh, this poem that I'm going to perform, to you perform for you now is called Not a Popular Opinion. Now, it's based on a conversation that I had with somebody. It's not a sweeping statement at all, but it made me very angry at the time. So I'm going to share that with you today. I'm culturally appropriating. You're rating my passion through the eyes of a career gold digger. <sighs> Looking for meanings unwritten. Themes, motifs, and meta-imagery. I say what I see. I'm on catchphrase constantly. I'm good, but I'm not the one. I'm frustrated with what I've become. These narcissistic ramblings. This child that went rambling now sips Prosecco listening to pseudo-socialist expressions espoused by people who don't want to work. <sighs> the system's not working, but you use it to support you. You don't earn any, you don't earn any wages <laughs> while you profit from the sweat of other people who do. Thing is, I agree, things aren't the way that they're supposed to be, but I find it hard to take you seriously. You see, when I drag my bones out of bed and pay all my bills and work till I'm dead, you're still sleeping. You're reaping your meager existence from the ache in my muscles. And honestly, I know there are some who can't work. They're too sick, they're too hurt by the weight of their age. But when you rage that your check's not through, that the world's not fair, that it owes something to you, I can't help it. I feel like I would like to give the help you've received to someone who really needs it, who knows what it's like to really need, a refugee, someone who wants to support their family. It's not a popular opinion. I won't earn any friends with this. And you know, there are some people that can call me a hypocrite. I claimed money when I first had my son, was made redundant when they noticed my bump. It's not legal, but neither was the war in Iraq. And we all know that that situation's coming back. Zero hour contracts, 50 hour working weeks, flush the week from the system that rewards the wolves. There's no paid overtime, we're on Victorian rules. And now here I sit, eating quince and cardamom jam, and my old punk friendships wonder who I think I am, with my fancy little accent and my shoes that have no holes. 
Now there's middle class flab on my working class bones. Thing is, my ideals haven't changed. I still think we should protect the vulnerable among us, give our elders our respect. Speak to me statistically, romance me with the cold, hard facts. I don't want to hear recycled bigotry, especially if it's Murdoch media backed. I believe in the freedom of education. I believe in the NHS. I believe that if you tell one generation they're doomed, you're dooming all the rest. I believe in the power of discussion. I believe in empathy. I believe that the kindness of strangers shows truthful humanity. Now, the amount of tax unpaid is 30 times the money claimed, and yet the newspapers tell me that it's benefits to blame for why the cupboard's empty and the pension pot is bare. They tell me that the CEOs don't have enough to share. Now, I don't work in finance. I failed economics. But I did work in promotions, and I know my demographics, those pigeonholes we put us in through judgment and research. And the one you've chosen causes my causes to be smirched. And objectively, I know there are so damn few of you that the cost of it is almost worth forking out so the people who want to work don't have to deal with you. But really, I can't help it. The help that you've received, I think, would be better going to a refugee, someone who knows what it's like to truly need. So please consider if you really need this. It's not a popular opinion. I won't earn any friends with this. But in this situation, a little empathy wouldn't go amiss. And that's all I have for you.